So the idea of a commons, as I was saying, is something that is technically considered to be um, a cultural and natural resource that's owned uh, in common by all people, hence not owned uh, privately. It's also interesting, um, I think, to note that the term uh, was originally a Roman legal category that referred to a communis, which is to say things owned and enjoyed by all, versus a res publica, or um, public property managed by the state. So we can think of the sea, again, as something uh, that is now uh, under threat as a commons. And so this was one of the things that I think motivated us to focus uh, on the sea. Uh, more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with ocean. Uh, the ocean provides 95% of the space for living creatures on our planet, and it contains 97% of all the water on our planet. Um, Three billion people use the ocean for their food, and about 20% of the world's population lives less than 20, 30 kilometers away from the beach. The ocean market value is estimated to be three trillion US dollars and it supports about 200 million jobs around the world. Did you know that more than half the oxygen we breathe on land comes from phytoplankton in the ocean? By some estimates, more than seven, up to 70% of the, of the oxygen we breathe, we, sorry, and more than 70% of the oxygen we breathe on planet Earth uh, is due to phyto photosynthesis activity by these microorganisms in the ocean. And these same microorganisms are also responsible for absorbing more than 25% of the carbon dioxide that we produce on land because of uh, burning fossil fuel. So if it weren't for the ocean and the phytoplankton uh, that reside in it, climate change would already be so much worse by now. When we look at the ocean, we see the effects of human activity to the deepest point that we know of. It is estimated that 30 to 40% of the ocean surface is already affected by human activities due to fishing, transportation, pollution, climate change, and habitat loss. We are taking sand out of the ocean. We are taking fish out of the ocean. We are taking minerals and metals and oil and gas out of the ocean. And there is an, an increasing amount of activity in the deep sea. And then there's fishing. We take too many fish by big fishing fleets in ways that do not allow for the fisheries to regrow. On the other hand, we have climate change, limiting biodiversity, warming the seawater and expanding it, and worst of, worst of all, making it more acidic. All that, combined with weak ocean governance, has really put our world's ocean at peril, and we find ourselves facing a challenge to stop this decline before it destroys us all. As of today, we're in conversation with people uh, based in Corfu and Na Naples, and uh, Nicholas in particular has taken the lead on this now, so hopefully uh, he can say more about this in the discussion or uh, Q&A session after. But regardless of where we anchor this, um, both this summer and hopefully in future summers, we're essentially hoping to team up with a host institution or community network to introduce um, a short, probably three to four week summer school uh, program for theories of an action around the sea. The idea would then be to focus on one or two, on one or two of the themes we're exploring, um, which I'll say more about again in a minute, um, and to host a series of essentially peripatetic discussions led by scholars and students alike and organized around something like small reading group meetings, uh, punctuated by communal activities, artistic or creative collaborations, and local or public engagements around each summer's highlighted theme or themes. Other ideas include running political sailing lessons with activists or fishermen, staging a public exhibition uh, aimed at awareness around issues pertaining to the livelihood and future of our seas, and finally, um, conducting or hosting environmental research and activism at a grassroots level in collaboration with local communities or organizations at our chosen site. One was the tidal shore, as I call it, which is mostly referring to how the state of Israel is using or abusing, if you wish, the international law about the illicit uh, boundary um, 
off the Gaza uh, Strip in an arbitrary fashion that, you know, it reminded me of, of a tide that uh, goes off and on, you know, goes into and, and, uh, and, and back and forth into the sea. Sometimes they say, okay, you can fish up to the three miles, then next day perhaps six miles, then again you cannot fish at all. So I'm using this metaphor of a tidal shore uh, as an administrative tidal shore, you know, to show that uh, many actually uh, lives are caught up in this, and uh, much of this arbitrariness is in line, of course, with the arbitrariness of the occupation documented by other scholars.